Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to Internet Analysis. Today I'm going to continue to talk about family vlogging. If you didn't see the first part yet, it's called Family Vloggers Are Ridiculous, and I talk about kind of the concept of family vlogging and the weird direction that some family vloggers or family channels have gone in, such as creating fake, scripted, set up kind of content, along with some other questionable topics for their videos. Today's video, I needed a second part entirely to discuss because it's very important. Today's video is about the dark side of family vlogging, which I believe to be all of the privacy issues. So at best, family vloggers are just aiming to create entertaining and family-friendly content. But at their worst, it could be argued that family vloggers exploit their children for money. So to begin with, I am not a parent and I don't want to judge how people decide to raise their children and how they parent. But on the flip side, just because someone is a parent doesn't mean that they cannot make bad decisions. This is not a hate video, I'm simply raising some questions that I think need to be asked. The concept of filming your family and your life on a daily basis is a very new phenomenon. This has only been happening in the last few years this is the first generation of kids who will be growing up with some of them from birth their entire childhoods online for all to see and that's why I think it is totally acceptable to question this we do not know what the long-term impacts of daily family vlogging can be and how they affect the children themselves the parents the entire family dynamic it's very complicated so as I said this video is mainly about privacy including personal space, but also, of course, online safety, the difficulty of trying to protect personal private information. I'll touch on what I think would be the parents' perspective and the kids' perspectives, and of course, the potential for creepiness in this realm. So, starting out with parents. Obviously, parenting and deciding how you raise your children is a deeply personal affair, and I totally understand that as somebody who's not a parent. As much as I can understand, I understand. So one big challenge that I see a lot of family vloggers face is that they are opening themselves up to being judged, again, by strangers, sometimes millions of them, on how they are raising their kids. Every aspect of their household or their life or whatever their kids are up to can be under a microscope. If they film it, it can be judged. I can only imagine how difficult it is as a parent to get those kind of comments from strangers, again, who don't know your personal circumstances, to get that kind of judgment. It's one thing to get hate comments about yourself, but for people to be commenting on your parenting or your kids, that's hard. But the big appeal of family vlogging, I think for most parents, is the potential to work from home with your family. In their eyes, they get to be with their family all the time. And of course, when you compare that to the standard day job that a lot of parents have, or nights, it's nice to think that you'll be able to spend more time with your family. But the reality of daily vlogging is that almost every moment is work. That's the ironic situation here. Yes, you're free in the sense that you're home, but every moment you may need to grab your camera and film something. Then after spending an entire day filming, you spend your nights editing and uploading and promoting the video. The work never stops. And not even just that, it's no secret that vlogging, especially daily vlogging, can put huge strains on relationships. It's very complicated when your family life, your friends, and your home life are all intertwined in your business, your vlogging. Those blurred lines can create a lot of stress and pressure. If there's ever any conflict or kind of negative things, sad things going on at home, it makes it hard to do your job. People may have to put on a brave face and pretend like nothing's wrong for the sake of the video, but then they're forcing themselves to live this lie. So let me be honest, I am sympathetic for the parents, but my main concern are the children. I think it is possible for parents to kind of get lost in the numbers and the money of it all and lose sight of what their initial goals were, especially when you're talking about these families who are making enough money to support the entire family just through vlogging. That becomes your livelihood. Your life and your job become one. And people do some crazy things when it comes to money. For example, there is one infamous family vlogger, the channel was called Daddy of Five, where basically these parents had pranks 
that were really then psychologically and verbally abusing their children, specifically their son Cody. I didn't do that! What the hell is that? I didn't do that! You tell me what you did! I swear to God I didn't do that! And they ended up losing custody of their kids. Back when all of this happened, Philip DeFranco and a lot of other creators made videos about it, so I'll put those in the description. And you may think, oh, they were clearly doing something wrong, their intentions were bad, that's not what these other family vloggers are doing. But those parents would argue that their intentions weren't bad, even though it's very clear to us watching that what they were doing with their kids, the trauma that they were inflicting on them to get clicks, is so obviously wrong. Was anybody traumatized? No! Oh. Well. I don't even know what that word means, but yes, no. I was. I was. No, I Obviously, a lot of vlogger parents would say that they only have good intentions, but how far will they go to get clicks? What limits do they push to earn more money? Continuing on, so what about the issue of the children's privacy? What is it like to have fan pages dedicated to your children? To have millions of people recognize your kids? In the more traditional celebrity world, a lot of famous people try to shield their children away from the spotlight, but family vloggers are obviously doing the opposite. I'm a bit conflicted because I do follow a few mom accounts on Instagram and I love their kids and I am glad that they're sharing them, but I do follow some moms as well who choose not to show their kids, such as Jenny Mullen, she's one of my favorite comedians and authors. She always puts a little sticker over her kids' faces or she'll just never take a picture unless it's the back of their head or something. And again, it's a very personal choice to decide whether or not to show your kids, but I think there's a big difference in showing your kids occasionally and having your kids be the star of your content. I sincerely do worry about these kids and what kind of stress they're under, just knowing that they can't have a day at home where they can sulk or be alone. Or if they are happy, maybe they just want to experience that without a camera in their face. We don't know how each of these kids will react. Even within a family, all of the siblings can have different reactions to this. You may have these little kids who like to be on camera when they're younger, but as they grow up, they may not want to be on camera anymore for a variety of reasons. The thing is, toddlers or young kids or even older kids, they can't truly fathom the amount of people who are watching them, who know them. Until a certain age, you cannot comprehend that. They may say, oh, it's cool to get views or comments or likes, but I don't think that they can really understand. And by the time that they are old enough to understand, they may completely resent that. A lot of these kids probably just think, it's fun to make a video with mom and dad. They're not thinking, we're creating content for strangers. So this is the part of the video that I am dreading talking about the most because I think it's the worst, and that is the threat and risk of exposing your children to predators. Obviously these parents are making this content innocently, and you'd think that the average viewer like you or me is watching it innocently. Oh, these are kids swimming or playing or whatever. We're not going to sexualize that, but we know that the reality is there are pedophiles out there. So when I see a swimming video with 40 million views, I don't even want to estimate how many of those views come from people who are not looking at these children in an innocent way. It's sickening, it's horrible to talk about, it makes me uncomfortable to even imagine it, but I cannot imagine as a parent putting my children out there and exposing them to that audience. Obviously YouTube analytics can't tell you um, if there are any creeps watching your videos, but I think you can look at demographics and other analytics and kind of see where portions of your audience are. I read about one mom vlogger who decided to take her kids off the internet after looking at her analytics and realizing that a lot of her videos were being embedded on basically the websites of pedophiles. They were collecting these videos and sharing them. Her videos were ending up on predatory playlists. She turned embedding off and her male audience went from 40% to 17%. So you can see how big of a portion of her audience was coming from these sinister locations. And that's horrifying. I wish I could look at the analytics of a lot of these main channels to see if that seems to be a similar trend across the board, but even just the risk of that being a potential issue is just, ugh, it's terrible. 
Now, again, like I said, we like to assume that people are generally good. We like to assume that the majority of the audience, 99%, are all just good intentioned people, other kids watching, other parents watching, but there are just so many predators out there. That mom that I was talking about made a video about cloth diapering for her baby because she thought that a lot of parents would be interested in hearing about cloth diapers, which is true, but then she also found that that specific tag was also popular among pedophiles. It's, it's disgusting. But if you think about the number of family vloggers and channels who are okay with showing their kids, you know, swimming, sure, that may seem like an innocent activity, or even in the bath, but not showing any nudity. These channels don't have any bad intent, obviously, but you can't be so naive to think that every one of your viewers is watching this innocently. All right, that's the end of that. I can't discuss this topic anymore, but that's like the biggest threat in my mind. Let me take a little tea break and then we'll get back into something less dark. My tea is always cold by the time I actually drink it. Okay, so I wanna get back into what it's like to be a vlogger. I vlogged very minimally, I would say, but to be a daily vlogger, and this is a problem that all vloggers face, whether you're solo or you're a couple or you're a family vlogger, you're monetizing your life. You're monetizing your relationships. When you become a vlogger, especially a daily vlogger, you have the pressure to film all of the best, greatest, most impressive, cutest moments in your life, in your day. But there are so many moments that are precious and would be even more enjoyable if you didn't have to film them, if you didn't have to stop and set up a camera. Now, I'm definitely not a technology hater, you know? I get that people like to record memories to be able to look back on them, but when I go and watch my old home videos, they're completely raw, they're unedited. It's just somebody's grandpa, like, filming really terribly and shaky, and that's it. It's real. Nobody was acting. Nobody was talking to an audience. It was just by the family for the family. Vloggers like to say that their videos are authentic, that it's a completely honest representation of their lives, or generally honest. But the truth is, when you are filming something, knowing that it's going in a YouTube video, and then you edit it, that's just not real anymore. It's impossible to be. As a vlogger, you have to constantly be asking yourself, is this a vlog moment? Can I just sit and enjoy this moment as it happens? Or should I film it because it's cute? Or because my kid's crying and it'd be a good thumbnail? That one's messed up. A lot of vloggers would argue that it's a good thing that they film so much of their lives because they have this amazing catalog to look back on, more content than most other people would to go watch in the future and enjoy as a family, which to an extent I agree. I definitely love that I filmed a lot of myself and my friends from the time that I was like 12. That's over 10 years ago. A lot of my friends don't have a lot of that same video, that's true, but also now that we are in this time in 2018, when our iPhones have 256 gigabytes of memory, most people are constantly taking pictures and filming things, but also most people don't put that on the internet. You can film something, take a picture, capture that moment if you want to, but you don't have to share it online. I definitely don't think that anyone is gonna have a lack of videos and pictures to go back and look at. And again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to share your pictures or your videos, but why don't you do that on your private Facebook so that your family and friends, people that you trust can see, and not just anyone out there? One big question I have for family channels out there is if your kids one day decided, I don't ever wanna be featured in a video again, would you stop? Would you be okay with that? Something that's a really important trend in parenting recently is the idea of teaching your kids consent in all ways. Whether it's like teaching them that they're allowed to say no to hugs even when it's from family members. Teaching them that they're allowed to question you as a parent or say, I don't feel like doing that. Teaching your kids that it's okay to speak up, especially if they feel uncomfortable. So with that trend in mind, which I think is a great thing, it's really great to teach kids that, a lot of kids grow up thinking that they should just always trust any adults that are around them, and that's dangerous. A lot of vloggers say that they ask their kids, they make sure their kids are okay with what they're filming, but that's not true, that can't be true. Because what if you had a day where all your kids didn't wanna be on camera? You still have content to make. I can imagine the pressure to create that content and make that money. You'd say, hey kids, this is your daily chore, you gotta be in the vlog. But anyway, back to my main point. If all of your kids decided they didn't want to be in the channel, would you do it? And would your channel survive 
if your kids were no longer featured? If your family channel were just the parents, just the adults, would you still be getting views? I don't think so. Of course, there are a lot of channels where maybe the parents are a main pull, but I would argue that the vast majority of family vlogging channels, the ones who are really drawing in the audience, are the kids. I think it would be an incredibly difficult decision for parents because they want to listen to their kids, they wouldn't want to force their kids to do something that they don't want to do, but when your entire family's financial stability depends on this family vlog, the more money you're making, the more popular you are, the more difficult it would be to stop. Your audience would be so upset, mainly because your audience is a lot of kids who don't understand. I don't think you could rationally sit down and be like, hey guys, we decided because of privacy we're not gonna feature the kids anymore. Most of your audience would probably leave. And that's the situation that you're agreeing to when you set up a channel like this. You know that that is the risk. For any channel, if you take away the content that the viewers are used to, the viewers are gonna go away. I personally think it's really unfair to make the children kind of bear the weight of supporting the family financially. Obviously the parents are actually running the channel, negotiating brand deals, editing the videos, but the kids are the ones who have to be on camera. They are an integral part of the work. Without them, the show doesn't go on. It's kind of like child actors who end up making so much money that they do support their families. You know, mom takes a manager cut and a lot of people would say, oh, well, these kid vloggers aren't child actors. They're just going about their lives. Is it work to have your parents film you while you're playing? A lot of these kids do way more than that. I read about this 13 year old YouTuber who started to make doll collection videos and toy reviews and she started to get a lot of views, earn a lot of money, and slowly her mother started to pressure her more and more and more to continue continue filming and filming and filming and editing constantly so that they could make more money and so that her mom could quit her job and her dad could quit her job and that is so unfair for a 13 year old who just wants to make videos about something that she enjoys to suddenly have the burden of supporting her family. That's not fair. That is against child labor laws. That's, that's not right. This has been a mentally exhausting video to think about and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I don't really know what conclusion I have. I almost think that maybe at the very least family channels shouldn't film anybody under 13 and after 13 the kids should be able to give their consent if they would like to be filmed but the majority of the stars of family channels are babies and toddlers who obviously can't give their consent. Then there's another side of me who just thinks Family vlogging should just not be a thing. And again, I'm talking about these dedicated daily or every other day vloggers where their entire life is filmed constantly. Again, it is up to every parent to make their own decisions and choose how they raise their family, what their home life is gonna be like. But I think that the consequences should really be considered. This is a very, very new phenomenon and it's gonna be really sad as the years go on and we hear from these kids who have been vlogged their entire lives. I know that there are gonna be a lot of them who are very upset, who looking back feel uncomfortable with the fact that they were filmed so often publicly. Okay, that's my video. Make sure you guys subscribe, like the video, comment, follow me on Instagram. I also have a podcast. It's called Previously Gifted if you want to hear me talk a bit more casually. And that's it. Stay tuned for another video. Okay, thanks. Bye.